You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, it's Sarah, and I want to welcome you personally to this very special edition of the No Labels, No Limits podcast. This is a new series that we just started, and we are so excited to introduce you to Moments with Maria. This series is a shorter version of the podcast. Maria touches upon words of advice and wisdom and encouragement that are shared by the members of our community, for the members of our community, and to all of you beyond. So without further ado, let's welcome Maria. All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Maria Lees and I am the content writer for Team Sarah Box. And this is another video in our series in which different members of our Sarah Box community are joining me to share some advice, wisdom, encouragement, and positivity with us today. I have the pleasure on in this interview of sitting down with Douglas Haddad. He is an award-winning teacher teaches middle school, which is a special place in my heart. I used to teach middle school. He's also a best-selling author with a passion for helping families thrive. Douglas, welcome. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on. Yes, absolutely. Now, I have to say, I'm now, I think, the third member of the Sarah Box team that has had the pleasure of connecting with you, and you come very highly recommended and highly praised, so this is a joy. It's an absolute pleasure. I mean, I I love being on the show and really talking all things positive. The world really needs just to focus on positive and really channel our energy towards that. And I'm glad to be on. So thank you again. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So just for starters, Douglas, I'd love for if you could just share with with our community, you know, a little bit about yourself and, and the work that you do. Sure. Yeah. My name is Douglas Haddad. And by day, I'm a teacher, as you can maybe see in the background here. I'm a (laughs) science teacher at the middle school level. I've been for 23 years. Um, As you said, I'm also an author. I've written um, a health and fitness book. I've also written a book for parents titled The Ultimate Guide to Raising Teens and Tweens. Um, So there's a lot of work that I've done over the years with parents, with families, children in education and overall health and wellness fields. So I'm excited to share anything and everything today to be able to help communities out there to best support them. For a living, you know, what I do is I work with middle school kids and I've seen so many social emotional needs that they have these days since the start of COVID. And just being able to bring a child back to a state of resilience, a state where they're feeling that uh, their voices matter, that they're being heard, that they're being understood, that they're being accepted. Because quite frankly, there's a lot going on in the world. You know, we're hearing overseas. I just recently came back from the United Arab Emirates. I did a talk over there um, at the Etihad Arena talking at a parenthood conference. And I got to meet a lot of people from all over the world, uh, both fellow speakers, as well as individuals that were in attendance at my talks. And the issues that kids are dealing with are quite profound these days because years ago growing up, you know, we dealt with the traditional problems of smoking and drinking and substance Mm -hmm. abuse, gambling, and all these things that still exist with kids. However, now there's issues too with social media, gaming addictions, um, synthetic drug use, uh, depression is on an increase, anxiety, all of these issues. So that's why I feel that my work as a teacher um, and the work that anybody who has an impact that puts on a child out there is gravely important, if that's the right term to use Mm -hmm. um, in today's day and age. Because I said to all the people that I spoke with, I said, um, we're here really to help change one child and help one parent at a time for this generation and future generations to come. Yeah, I, I think the way that you described it you know, just that kids today have so much more on their plates and are, they're growing up in such a different world, even than I did, which wasn't, you know, too terribly long ago in the grand scheme of things, but I didn't have half of what these kids today have. And, you know, I, I can't imagine honestly being a 10, 11, 12, 13 year old today dealing with all of the things that they are, they're dealing with, you know, at the, 
emotional and mental development that they still are at, which <laughs> hasn't changed. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the prefrontal cortex, as they say, mm -hmm. isn't completely developed, not until you're like about 26 years old. Yeah. That's why you can't rent a car until you're that age. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> smart. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, when a child's brain just gets completely immersed with all the stress mm -hmm. level hormones, cortisol and adrenaline kicks in, mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to rationalize and think, you know, in their upper brain. So that's why they're, it's important to teach them strategies on how to identify their emotions. I think a lot of the work that people are doing out there with emotional intelligence is invaluable because it helps kids better identify their emotions, know how to manage their emotions, and understand how their emotions are sort of the cause to the effect of how they interact with everyone. And that becomes a vicious circle of the relationships we have, you know, they have with their peers and adults and how to appropriately interact. That's so super important even for social media, Maria, yeah. because social media out there, you don't, it doesn't come with a handbook to say, all right, kids, as soon as you get your iPhone, here's exactly how you behave on there. They have to be taught these things. Um, right. So I like how I'm seeing more in schools, this infusion of these concepts and these skills and practices being embedded. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that's so needed. So something that, you know, I know that my husband and I have talked about, it's come up in different circles that I've been in, and I'm sure that there are other parents in our audience that can relate to this, um, that kind of like fear and almost anxiety of we're raising kids in a world we don't recognize and in a world that we didn't grow up in. So how do we support and prepare our children for the things they have to deal with when we never dealt with half of it? What kind of advice or wisdom would you <laughs> offer to parents like me that might be feeling a little bit of that anxiety? It's called The Ultimate Guide to Raising Teens and Tweens by Douglas Haddad. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> that, that is a loaded question. No, I was introduced pitch there, but honestly, like in my book, I talk about the different child limiting um, challenges out there. So all the things I said, the traditional challenges and the new age ones. So for parents to become educated to know what those challenges are firsthand is important. If their child is going to be allowed to go on social media, the parent themselves should follow their child, should have their child's mm -hmm. password, should have the ins and outs to know who are the people that they're liking and part of their friend group. Because mm -hmm. if they're just like, oh, okay, everybody else is doing it. Oh, your friends are doing it. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't want to hear anything bad. You always want to be proactive and always be one step ahead of your child. So educating yourself on the problems, first off, engaging yourself with the social media, as I said. Um, knowing your friend's peer group is very important because they're going to have more and more of an influence as a child goes from childhood, elementary, through into the middle school, adolescent years. So um, I know I have a toddler at home. Um, she's three and three quarters now. <laughs> and I understand the value of having a routine set in. And even as early as it may sound out there, parents, we want to make sure that our child is not exposed to a lot of screen time because that could turn into a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've seen it firsthand, you know, uh, you know, our child watches, you know, age appropriate shows. She watches like a songs for littles, or it could be a uh, blippy or Mika um, or Mosh and the bear, all things that have an educational value to it. However, there's still screen time associated with it. And I've noticed that even my child says, oh no, I want more, another show, another show. And if you give in too much, then they want more and more and more. Um, and anyway, the radiation on a phone isn't good for a child. And we really don't have enough studies out there, especially for a child who's growing and developing and their cells are you know, actively reproducing. We don't know if these things are gonna cause tumors or cancer, um, more yeah. so in children than adults. Um, and this goes for adults too. I'm guilty as charged as well. Having my phone in my pocket a lot, I try to take it out. Um, so those are the things that I would say to start um, to have a routine in place, um, to have healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, also giving your children choice to things, you know, whether it's choice of, oh, do you want to um, play this game or this game? Or do you want to watch um, this show now? Or do you want to play a game and watch the show later? So that empowers them and that lets them know that you actually um, value their opinion on things. And their input. Mm. 
Those are some great tips. I, yeah, the screen time one, I feel like is huge, you know, because we as adults struggle with regulating screen time and setting appropriate boundaries for ourselves and not just being on our phone scrolling or down YouTube rabbit holes. So if we're struggling, you know, children don't stand a chance you know, to, to be able to kind of rein it in. Oh. Yes, so you're saying, um, we struggle too as adults with that, right? Yeah. Um, I know what we do at school is our principal is great about it. We have our own page on Instagram. And what we try to model is when we take pictures, we actually ask for the child's um, consent. And that's something that we should be a practice among, you know, to as well, not just to go snapping pictures and posting them online. That's where they really get in trouble. Um, and these days, too, even one incident of that could deem itself as bullying. And some schools and some districts have a, a real harsh policy on that when a child maybe didn't know. So, again, being yeah. edgy on the social etiquette, the social permanence, the digital permanence of the action that you take could have long lasting effects. So that was a great question you asked. And it's really a loaded question um, for parents <laughs> to begin. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I appreciate so much all that you have shared with us today, Douglas. And for those that didn't catch it, would you just remind us the title of your book one more time? Sure. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Raising Teens and Tweens. Okay, that's great. That's definitely one I'm going to add to my list. We don't have tweens quite yet, but you know, it's coming. So yeah. <laughs> one of these is prepared. Easy. Eight is what they're considering tweens. Oh, yes. I mean, what they're being exposed to and what they're seeing and what they're experiencing just keeps getting earlier. I was like, wow, tweens to me used to be like 11 or 12. Yeah. <laughs> earlier, I was like, wow. Okay, well, that is really good to know. I'm going to file yeah. that one away. <laughs> Hold yeah. on to that. Got a lot of good nuggets to chew on and to, to discuss with my husband today. We've got some things we need to figure out before we have an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, yeah. anyway, thank you so much for your time, Douglas. And thanks to all who've carved out a few minutes to sit with us today and to watch this video. I just invite all of you in our community to stay tuned for more encouraging and uplifting videos coming your way. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.